It's gonna be me Look, I just flipped the switch flip, flip. I don't know nobody else that's doing this The Adventures of Mr. Smith Hey kids, it's Mr. Smith here. First off, I miss you guys so much. I miss seeing you guys smile. Even though I tell you every day not to smile, I secretly miss it. So if you're smiling right now, stop smiling because you're not allowed. But I'm here to tell you that part of my uh, job is I come here and make sure that Baxter's fed, he's exercised, and he goes to the potty. All right, Baxter, hold on, hold on, I'm coming. I'm coming. Baxter, get back here now! Baxter! Oh my goodness. Nine one one. This is Mr. Smith from Bedminster Elementary School. Baxter's got out again. You're probably going to need the tranquilizer darts. It was so nice to see Baxter again. We will have to see what trouble he gets into next week. What is Mickey Mouse's favorite sport? I don't know. Mini golf, get it? Mini golf? <laughs> now to Miss Swanson with Thumbs Up Math Trivia. Here's today's edition of Thumbs Up Math Trivia. <laughs> so for our younger students, the world for 200. What is a measure of time that equals 60 minutes? So boys and girls, 60 minutes are in an Hour is correct. And the world for 300. And for our third, fourth, and fifth graders, a fraction that names a number greater than or equal to one. And there's two answers for this. Two ways you might express this fraction. Are you ready? So we could have an improper fraction. An improper fraction is greater than one. Here you can see there are four pieces in each hole. So there's your four in your denominator. And there are seven pieces shaded or pictured here um, in the aqua color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that gives you seven fourths. Another way to express a fraction greater than one would be a mixed number, right? In the same example, four over four, or four out of four equals one. There's three fourths left over, so our mixed number would be one and three fourths. Thank you for watching this week's Thumbs Up Math Trivia. 
Have a great day! Now here's Ryder with weather. Hi, this is Ryder with the weather. Today is supposed to be a high of 67 degrees with a chance of showers. On Saturday and Sunday, it's supposed to be a high of 70 and um, mostly sunny. Now to Gemma with the birthdays. I wish a special Bobcat happy birthday to Luke Thomas, Piper Arkins, Gavin O'Connell, Colette Kruger, and Mrs. Barr, who all had birthdays this week. Happy birthday today to Rachel Shag, and happy birthday on Sunday to Cole Cochran and Giovanna Garrison. Happy birthday to all. Hey Bobcats, guess what game is coming to the blaze? The game Would You Rather. Do you know what game that is? Would You Rather is a fun game where one person asks other people a question that requires them to make a choice. It can be a funny or a difficult choice that will make you think about what's important to you. Share your answer with the people around you and be ready to answer why you chose your answer. Let's try one now. Hi, boys and girls. Mrs. Gelati here with a would you rather question. So, would you rather drink all of your beverages out of a large bucket or out of a baby bottle? Now, here's Mr. Gelati to talk to us about mindfulness. Hi, Ben, Mr. Bobcats. I'm here again today to talk to you a little bit more about mindfulness. Last week, we watched a video about the brain and we learned about the different parts of the brain. We learned about the reptilian part of the brain which is responsible for keeping us alive and it is important in sensing danger. We also learned about the smart part of the brain and that's the part that's right up here. It's called your prefrontal cortex. Now your prefrontal cortex is the smart part of your brain so it's important when you want to be mindful for that smart part of your brain, the prefrontal cortex, to be in control. And one way of calming down that reptile part of your brain or the amygdala is to take deep breaths. Now we've done a lot of practicing with deep breaths. Today we're going to be seeing a new video about mindful seeing. Now, mindful seeing means that you're looking at something and you're trying to block out everything else around you. For example, noises, your feelings, and you're really just focusing on what you can see. Now, I'm going to be sharing a video with you of an aquarium. So when you see all the fish swimming around, what I want you to do is find one fish, maybe an orange or a red fish, and really just follow that fish with your eyes. Try not to focus on anything else going around you, like noises or how you're feeling or um, what you can smell. You want to just focus on what you can see. This can really help you when you're trying to um, pay attention or trying to focus a little bit better. So once again, this week we're going to practice mindful seeing to try to help get that reptile part of your brain or the amygdala calm down so that the smart part of your brain or the prefrontal cortex can come back into control. Take care, boys and girls, and I will see you next week. Here are Doug and Poppy from the Clubhouse Kids sharing how they showed initiative last month. Doug, what are you doing? Well... Mrs. Gelati told us in school that we should be showing more initiative, and this is initiative month, and so I saw all these dirty dishes laying here, and I decided that I would wash them and get them all cleaned up and put them away for mom. Wait, what are you doing? I'm putting them away. No, but it's all wet. If you need help, you just have to ask. Oh, okay. Well, I'll put it in the drying rack for now. All right, well, remember, boys and girls, be showing initiative out there. Hi everybody, Poppy Peterson here and Gracie. I know that this month we've been talking about initiative. An initiative at school is really easy to show sometimes because just getting right to work and doing your work that the best you can is a great way to show initiative. Doing your distance learning is another great way to show, dis show initiative. But what I was thinking is how could I show initiative in another way here? Everybody's home because nobody can go out. Um, so one of the ways that I thought I could show initiative was maybe to organize some of my t-shirts because I have a lot of t-shirts. And 
So I'm going to go through and I'm going to clean out my t-shirts and keep some and get rid of some that um, I think I might not wear anymore. Now, of course, I want to keep my Bobcat shirts. Those are super important for when we have spirit days. Another shirt that I want to make sure I keep is my Red Sox shirt. Even though I live in the Philadelphia area and Mr. Peterson is a huge, huge, huge Phillies fan. See, I have both kinds of shirts, okay? But I'm gonna keep both of them. So that's how I'm gonna show initiative. I'm gonna spend some time today going through and folding all of my t-shirts nicely and putting them away and also getting rid of some of the ones that I might not wanna wear anymore. I'm gonna donate those, okay? Bye, Bobcats. I can't wait to see how you all show initiative. Now here is Mrs. Gelati talking about our Takes Pride theme for May. Hi Bobcats, it's Mrs. Gelati here with May's Takes Pride theme of the month, which is dependable. Dependable means that you follow through with your words, you can be trusted to keep your promises, and that your actions show that you are dependable. During the month of May, we're going to be seeing the Clubhouse kids showing us how they are dependable. We're also going to be participating in some flip grids to show how you are dependable. And our first flip grid this week is about you giving an example of how you follow through with what you say you're going to do. For example, if you tell your mom and dad that you're going to feed the cat, then if you're dependable, it means you actually feed the cat, which is important so the cat doesn't go hungry. So I hope that you all learn a lot from the Clubhouse Kids and are also practicing being dependable during the month of May. Hey Bedminster, Ethel here from the Clubhouse Kids. And I was coming in to talk to you a little bit about the theme, our SEL theme for the month of May. Our SEL theme is dependability. And one way that you can be dependable and show dependability is by following through with what you say, otherwise known as keeping your word. Like I told my mom I would make my bed this morning and I still haven't made it if you check it out. So if I'm going to be dependable, I need to follow through with what I'm saying and do it. So there's lots of ways you can do this, especially while you're at home right now doing your work when you say you'll do your work, actually doing your work that you said you did, and cleaning up toys, doing laundry, keeping your word, walking the dog. Okay, so see if you can work on that. And I'm going to go make this bed because I need to be dependable too. Bye. Here's some students sharing how they show dependability at home. When I'm Aiden and I'm from Mrs. Swery's class, and the way that I show dependability is that I show up at my soccer practice and my friends can depend on me and I also am my games too. I'm Andrew from Mrs. White's class. Um, I, I hope I do dependability by um, feeding the fish without being told. Bye. Hi, my name is Jocelyn, and I show dependability by taking out the trash whenever it needs it. By feeding our dog breakfast and, and dinner. Now here are some teachers with shout outs. Okay, it's Mrs. Giuliano. I wanted to send a shout out to Tyler Larson in my class. He shows dependability by doing all of his remote learning assignments, having them turned in before the day is through. I do not have to send anything back, which means he is checking over his work and I can always count on him to have his assignments done. Great job, Tyler. Hi, this is Miss Nappy. This is a shout out to all the students in the band program. I've been so incredibly impressed with the work that you've been showing these past few weeks, if not these past couple months um, on Seesaw. You have really showed your dedication and how strong you, your skills are um, in what I have seen. Um, so bravo to you. 
uh, and I continue to look forward to your work every week. It puts a smile on my face to hear from you guys and to see everything that you've been accomplishing. So again, shout out to all of my band students. Excellent, excellent work in this time. I look forward to hopefully seeing you in the near future and uh, getting to work with you again face to face next fall. Bobcats believe in ourselves. We don't give up and we always do our best. Remember Bobcats, be the reason someone smiles today. Bye.